Welcome to the Gospel Road. I know it's been a little while, been uh, kind of crazy with school and work. Uh, of course, school, I've got about a year, I think, left. Uh, then I'll have my associates done and then uh, figure out the plan on where things are going to go next and get that uh, taken care of. But uh, got a good plan, I hope. And uh, uh, it's it's a long road to go, let me tell you. Let, let me tell you. All right. Uh, what we're going to look at um, in this podcast is going to be First Corinthians chapter twelve. And just as a reminder, you know, the, the Gospel Road. What this is is the journey that I'm actually having in devotions when I'm reading, when I'm working out, and kind of what the Holy Spirit uh, shares with me and puts on my heart. And again, as I always stress when we talk about this and do these is when I share these with you to be sure to go check it out on your own and see what is given to you. Because something that I see could be different compared to, you know, what is revealed to you. And maybe it, there's a, a, something else happening in your life that this is going to deal with that is not the same situation I'm dealing with. So always, always uh, be sure to read these on your own, really kind of get into it and see what is brought to you, what what is revealed to you through your study and through your reading and, and your meditation on these. But uh, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by one spirit, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many members and all members of the body through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty. Which are more presentable parts do not require 
But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administration, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all possess gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but earnestly desire the higher gifts, and I will show you still more excellent way. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. What I really got out of this is something I've been talking about for a long time, even back to when I was in high school, and my plan was to be a youth pastor. And I talked about friendship and relationships and love for one another because that's what the Bible tells us that we are to do. We are to love one another. Love one another like Christ loved us. Just like, you know, we need to love God as we love ourselves, love one another as we love ourselves. It's love. Love, love, love. That is the undertone of the Bible. So with that love comes relationships. Relationships as friends, spouses, family. We all play a role. So what our relationship is, is part of that role that we play in each other's lives. Being a Christian, as reading in here, we're in one body. Just like our body has many members. You know, we remember that in science class, biology, right? Hands, fingers, toes, feet, knees, ankles, elbows, shoulders, you know, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Remember that song from when we were kids? And each part has its role that it needs to play to make it work. Just as the body of Christ, when we are working together, when we are going forward to do something for the kingdom, God brings you together with people to work with one another. The same thing goes for churches. It goes for work. You know, you have all these coworkers that you're working with, and each person has an important role. And it doesn't matter if it is cleaning the toilets, answering the phones, making the big deal. Everyone has to work together because if one of those are off, it affects the whole body. I mean, remember where it said that right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that if one member is hurting, all of the body will suffer. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together, which we don't see that a lot in business. We should, because when these things happen, one person does something fantastic Everybody should see that and then work together and say, look, because what that person did makes the company look great. Think about it. You go into work one day and somebody didn't empty your trash. And I know I've worked with people that messed up their entire day because their trash was not empty. Or they had to empty it themselves, or what, whatever the reason being. Everybody has a part that they need to play, and their part can affect how things are done that day. For me, last Friday night, I had a gig. And talk about an example I wasn't expecting that I could use for this. During load-in, I'm unloading my gear, 
I've got a speaker in one hand, a door in the other. I take a step, twist my ankle. Bad. <laughs> Didn't end up on the ground, but I, I did. And I, I know some people have been making comments, and they saw me posting it on Facebook, trying to have some kind of fun with it. Um, but it happens. That's why they call them accidents, right? So now for the next three hours after that, I'm not, no ice, not wrapping. I've still got to do my job. I'm standing on my foot, standing on my ankle. By the time the night's done, I'm barely moving. By the time I get home to unload everything, I am in tears. So because my ankle was suffering, my entire body was suffering because of that pain. And it was making it hard for me to do what I needed to do. So it's that same part when you're in a team working together. I, you know, I'm in school and I have my learning team. And if one person is not doing what they need to do, it affects the entire team. It affects that project that needs to be done. These are the things we need to realize what we're doing. Are we doing what we need to be doing? Are we doing our job? Are we helping where we need to help? Or are we just suffering? Are we making it hard for those around us, for those that we work with, for those that we're doing these things for? What is it that we're doing that is helping the body move forward to what needs to be done? Are you doing your job? Now, if someone is hurting, they're suffering, they're having problems, they're not able to get their part done, whatever the reason being, you know, maybe it's personal, physically, but they're having a problem. What are you doing as a body to come together to motivate them, encourage them, inspire them, to help them? To lift them up and say, okay, we can still do this together. I, I understand you're having a problem here. So what can we do to get this taken care of? To me, reading this, it's great information as you're trying to be successful, as you're trying to make that step in business. You, you've started your own business or you're working with a company and you have a position to fill. Are you filling that position to the best of your ability? Are you doing what is expected of you? What needs to be done of you? One body, many members. We all have a gift that we can use. We all have a talent that is able to do a specific part. And are you using your talent? Maybe you're still trying to find that talent. Maybe it's having those around you helping you decide or find out where that is so you are able to do what it is you need to do. Just thought it was great. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Read it. Check it out. See what comes to you by reading this. Until next time, have a great day. God bless. Thanks for listening to The Gospel Road.